four more basic functions. So this will be the second installment of the 12 basic functions. Okay, and again, like we did in the last, what we're gonna do is consider the four parent functions that are shown. Do they have continuity? What is the domain? What is the range? Are there extrema? Are there asymptotes or any other defining features in the graphs? The reciprocal function, f of x is equal to one divided by x. This is also called a rational function. Interesting fact, this curve is called the hyperbola. That would be the shape of it, sort of like a parabola is the shape of a quadratic function. And this also has a reflection property, which is useful in satellite dishes, much like the parabola. So again, in a later unit, when we talk about conic sections, we'll be talking about the parabolas and the hyperbolas together. All right, so here's a look at the graph. You've got a piece over here in the third quadrant, which is gonna be the same shape as what you've got in the first quadrant. They're sort of catty corner from each other. We do have asymptotes. You have a horizontal asymptote over here. You can have one right there along the x-axis. You are also gonna have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. You can have one over there. Okay, the vertical asymptote at the y-axis is because if you plug in a zero for x, which is, you know, a y-intercept, x is equal to zero, it becomes undefined, so there's your vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote at zero is gonna refer back to like the end behavior. As you plug in really large numbers for x, it gets closer and closer to zero, so you're gonna see the graph settle off towards the x-axis. Does it have continuity? No, it does not. No, it does not. It has an asymptote, let's say it has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Okay, at x equals zero, vertical asymptote. Let's go ahead and add that in. All right, and because of that vertical asymptote and the discontinuity, the domain's gonna get broken apart. It is going to come from negative infinity. We don't have any bound to the left, but when it gets to zero, it's gonna be open. We do not include it, we're not using a bracket, it stops just short of the zero. It then picks up right after zero and goes on to infinity. The range is gonna be the same thing. We're gonna have negative infinity to zero. It's gonna pick up again after zero and go to infinity, but that one is measured from the bottom to the top. The graph does extend forever down, which is the negative infinity, once we get up to the x-axis, which is at zero, that's where it breaks, then it picks up after that, and you've got this part of the graph that goes up forever. Asymptotes, yes, already been addressed here. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. We have the horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Is this function even, odd, or neither? It is not even because it's not reflective over the y-axis. You have a part of the graph in the first quadrant, but you don't have anything in the second quadrant. Can't be reflective. Odd, is this function odd? Yes, it is. Okay, to be an odd function, you need a point of symmetry at the origin. Okay, the graph does not need to go through that point. The graph doesn't have to pass through it, but it does need to act as a point of symmetry. Okay, so if I were to grab a point, let's grab this one here, just at the end. Okay, and then match that up with the point of symmetry and follow it through, there will be another point that is equidistant on that side of it. And I can choose points anywhere. I could grab a point right here, match it up to the point of symmetry. We can follow it through and the equidistant in that direction is gonna give you that point there. So this is going to be odd. The exponential function, f of x is equal to e to the x power. What's interesting about this is that there are many different exponential functions and many different parent functions to go with them, okay? Depending on what the base is that you choose. The base in this function is gonna be the number e, okay? But your base could be two, your base could be three, could be any number that you want. Generally, whatever base you choose, as long as all you're doing is raising it to the x power, we can refer to that as the parent function. And for the most part, it has the same shape of the graph that we're looking at here. The number values where it actually matches up will be a little bit different, but the answers to continuity, the domain, the range, all that stuff is gonna be the same. 
regardless of whatever base you choose. Now E is going to be the most important base that you eventually study. Okay, you'll probably go through some other ones first, like 2 to the x power, 3 to the x power, but eventually we get to E because it has a lot more practical uses in the real world. Interesting fact, E is an irrational number. It's a lot like pi. As pi has that decimal that goes on forever without any pattern to it, so does E. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Okay, let's do pi first. If I evaluate for pi, you're going to see that string of decimal numbers. It does go on forever, and there is no pattern to it. Okay, E, which every calculator is going to have a button for it somewhere, on this, it's going to be second, then the division button, and you're going to see E pop up. We evaluate it, and you get 2.718, etc. It's going to have this decimal that continues on without any pattern in it. Okay, here's the shape of the graph that we get, regardless of the base that we choose. It's going to have an intercept at 1. Okay, now the reason for that is because the x value at that spot would be 0. And no matter what you take, when you raise it to the 0 power, you get back 1. So all the different exponential functions will pass through that point unless we do some sort of transformation to it. It does have a horizontal asymptote as it moves this direction here. It appears that it might have a vertical asymptote as you go out to this side, but that would not be true. Okay, the graph is going to continue to push out to the right. And we can justify that by saying, look, you can plug in bigger and bigger values for x. There isn't going to be some cap on it. All right, now the rate at which you're going to see this move out to the side versus the rate at which it goes up is going to make it look a little bit like a vertical asymptote. But it does continue on forever to the right and up. Continuity, it does have continuity. We don't have any values that this cannot accept as a function. The domain is going to be all real numbers. The range is not going to be all real numbers. It is going to be bounded at the x-axis. It's going to be bounded here. You've got that horizontal asymptote. So we're going to have an open interval at 0, and it goes up forever. Does it have an asymptote? As mentioned before, it does have a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis, which is going to be y equals 0. Is this function even odd or neither? It will be neither. Okay, not symmetric over the y-axis. If we put a point of symmetry here, all the points that we'd find on the graph would be sitting in that direction of it. We would not have anything over here to match with it. So this will be neither, cannot be an odd function. The natural logarithm function. f of x is equal to the natural log of x. Not listed in my interesting fact here, but this is the inverse function to f of x equals e to the x power the last function that we just looked at here. Okay, and as it being an inverse function to it, and some things that we'll learn a little bit later more in detail, this is also going to have an asymptote, but the asymptote here is going to be along the y-axis, not along the x-axis. Okay, and as you move away from that asymptote, so as we move away this direction, the graph is going to appear to have maybe a horizontal asymptote, but it does not. It just moves up very, very slow. Okay, but it's always going to be climbing in its size. So the interesting fact that I did write here is that this function increases very slowly, what I was just describing there. It does not increase its height very fast. If the axes were scaled with a unit length of one inch, so imagine this actually built out where that was a length of one inch, two inch, three inch, so fairly large graph. If we scaled it out like that, you would need to travel more than 2.5 miles along the curve just to get a height of one foot above the x-axis. Continuity, it does not have any breaks in the graph, so that will be a yes. The domain, this is the inverse of the last function we looked at. So the domain is actually going to be restricted. The domain does not exist over here. The domain is completely to the right. Okay, we're going to be bounded over here at the y-axis. So we're going to have an open interval at 0 going to infinity. It does not actually make it to 0, so we're going to use parentheses, not a bracket. The range is going to be all real numbers. You're going to see that these are the opposite of what we had in the exponential function, which was e to the x power. Because these are inverses, 
the domain and the range are going to be opposites. Asymptote, we do have one. It is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Is it even, odd, or neither? The answer to this will be neither. Okay, and I can use the same argument that I did for example 2. Our last function in this video is a bit of an odd one. It's called the logistic function. f of x is equal to this. I'll just let you take a look at it. It's a bit of a weird one, okay? But it does have practical uses. Interesting fact, there are two horizontal asymptotes. You actually have an asymptote up here at one. You also have one down here at the x-axis. So that's different than any of the other graphs we've looked at. This function provides a model for many applications in biology and business. So this is more of a practical function that you would see in real world applications. All right, but looking just at the graph, does it have continuity? Does it appear to have any breaks in there? And it does not. So continuity, yes, it is continuous. The domain is gonna be all real numbers. It will extend forever to the left and to the right. Negative infinity to infinity. The range is gonna be bounded below and above, okay? And it's being bounded using asymptotes, which means that they're both gonna be open intervals. It's gonna be open from zero to one, and that's it. Asymptotes, as mentioned before, you've got two horizontal. We've got x equal to zero and x equal to one. Okay, even odd or neither, this is interesting. This graph does have a point of symmetry, it does. It has a point of symmetry, which is located right here. You could grab any point on that side of it, and it would be equidistant to another point on the other end. However, by the definition of odd functions, what we need is for f of negative x to be equal to negative f of x. You need opposite inputs to give you opposite outputs. Okay, and in this case, that does not apply. So remember that in an odd function, it isn't just about having a point of symmetry, which is interesting. It's neat that it has one, but that point of symmetry would need to exist at the origin for it to be odd. So this would be neither. It's kind of like when we talk about even functions. An even function has a vertical line of symmetry, but that line of symmetry has to be at the y-axis. So if you shift the parabolas to different locations, they then fail to be even functions. So this has a point of symmetry, but it is not going to be an odd function. Wait, there